Today, we're going to be canceling Samantha Lux, who is a YouTuber and a, quote, trans woman that is a biological male with a YouTube channel. Actually, a quite popular channel with well over 600,000 subscribers somehow. Sam has many videos promoting transgenderism and quite often responding to perceived instances of transphobia. One of the most recent videos on the channel targets, if you can believe it, none other than the leading LGBT children's author on the planet, yours truly. Sam stumbled across my children's book, Johnny the Walrus, which is still available for pre-order over at johnnythewalrus.com, by the way, and, uh, and uh, does not approve. Specifically, my video where I read the book to a group of children has provoked Sam's ire in a video titled, Transphobes are writing children's books. Trans girl reacts. This is good. You know, I, I am sincerely interested to hear how a trans girl, quote unquote, reacts to Johnny the Walrus. Perhaps this will be a point by point rebuttal. Perhaps evidence and science and logic and bulletproof moral arguments will all be marshaled. And by the end of the video, I, I will have completely changed my mind, realized the error in my ways, repented of my anti trans beliefs. Maybe even because of this video that we'll watch together, I will become trans myself. It's possible. So let's watch some of this and see what our friend Samantha Lux brings to the table. Now, if you're familiar with the content that I create here on my channel, if you're familiar with the arguments that conservatives love to make about trans people, you would be familiar with transphobes claim that we are indoctrinating their children, that we're making their children gay, that we're forcing their young tomboy daughter to become a boy. That's not me. Who me? Who me? I would never. I love you trans girl. <laughs> I love your tomboy daughter. She is great. What I don't love is a hypocrite. Matt Walsh, if you are not familiar with, is like an infamous transphobe on YouTube. This ho posted a video one week ago reading his book, Johnny the Walrus, to a bunch of little kids. Okay, so we're off to a rough start here uh, already. A few points. First, I do not believe, Sam, that you are forcing any child to do anything or making any child or making any child do anything. I am accusing you and your fellow propagandists of trying to heavily influence children with falsehoods, distortion, lies, and other forms of insanity that they, the children, do not have the mental capacity to sort through. So indoctrination does not often involve physical force because you cannot physically force someone to believe something. Belief requires mental assent, not physical assent. But you can coerce and trick people into believing things. And when they're children, that's very easy to do, as you know from experience. Also, by the way, I appreciate being called infamous, and I won't take any issue with that label. But um, I am not an infamous transphobe because I'm not a transphobe at all. And when I say I'm not a transphobe, I'm not saying it to gain your approval or to convince you that I'm not bigoted. Yeah, you know, I couldn't give it less, less of a damn if you think that I'm bigoted or not. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I am instead concerned with definitions. And the definition of phobia is irrational fear. I'm not afraid of trans people. If I was, I wouldn't spend so much of my time saying things that I know will make you angry. My fear, and it is not irrational, is of the effect that trans propaganda has on society, and especially on kids. Okay? So we have that clarified. Let's continue. We're going to have to skip around a little bit because Sam's video is long, and it seems like a little too self-involved even for me to spend too much time reacting to somebody else reacting to one of my videos. But we'll, we'll watch enough to get the gist and to discover whether Sam will be able to make any arguments that will disprove or undermine my central points. Let's keep going. All right, do you understand the comparison that's going to be happening here? He's like, this book is about a little boy who thinks he's a walrus and his mom, you know, also is convinced that he's a real walrus. Do you get the correlation? It's going to be about a little boy that thinks he's a girl or something and the mom is convinced that he's a real girl. How creative. How did you ever come up with such a creative, powerful analogy for children who don't understand what you're talking about? Yeah, it, well, you're right. It's not creative. It's not creative at all. I mean, the comparison between somebody identifying as a different sex and someone identifying as an animal has been done a million times. I'm not the first to do it. South Park did it a decade ago. But the problem is that nobody on your side has ever come up with anything approaching an effective response to the analogy. You've never been able to explain why it's wrong. All you can do, all you ever do is just scoff that you've heard the point before. Well, we know you've heard it. And you're going to keep hearing it over and over again until you answer it. All right, let's continue. What is this thing doing on the floor? That's, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to read the book now. This man has never met a kid in his whole life. Never interacted with one child. He's like, I don't give a Sit down, we're going to read the book. 
I'm here for half an hour and then I gotta go. So sit down so I can film. Okay. Thank you, brat. No, I, I think um, I think the problem is that you've never been around a dad before, which maybe I would have already guessed. Um, I'm around kids all the time because I have four of them, but so I, but I have by now developed a critical case of dad syndrome, and that means that I, I'm I'm just snapping my fingers and I'm keeping people on task. That's what I do. I'm dad. You should see me during chore time every night in my house. You get over there, pick up those shoes. You come over, vacuum the rug. I don't even remember anybody's names anymore. That's another symptom of dad syndrome. Okay, uh, skipping ahead. But Johnny's mom's phone said it's not just pretend. So she went on her phone and there were people telling her that this isn't pretend, he's really a walrus. Only a bigot would say that. How dare you offend? What's a bigot? Anybody know? Kids are, I don't even, I don't know how old these kids are. I'm not good at estimating age, but they don't know what you're talking about. You don't see their face? Did he run this past like an actual children's author? Maybe like read it to a kid and see what they thought before he published it? I think he just went for it. Of course they don't know what a bigot is. They're four. I mean, it does make sense that he would go for children because, you know, they have the same capacity for intellectual thought as him. Like, babe, if you're gonna write a children's book, write it for children. <laughs> write it using words that they understand and that they know and that you don't have to explain for them to understand what you're trying to say through your book. Um, first of all, don't call me babe. Second, did I run it by an actual children's author? Yes, I ran it by myself. And when myself came to myself and said, self, what do you think of this children's book idea? Myself responded, self, that's an exceptional idea. So I did get the go ahead from an expert in the field of children's literature, if that matters to you. Now, Sam also says that, that some of these concepts are above a child's head. Yes, yeah, Sam, that's the point. Now you're getting it. If a silly story about a kid transitioning into a walrus is inevitably too weird and abstract for children, then what happens if we mix sex and gender into it? Does it suddenly become more appropriate for children? If a child, as you say, isn't even old enough to understand what a bigot is or to hear the word, then is he old enough to be introduced to a concept like transgenderism? If he can't understand bigots, can he understand what it means for a boy to have a girl mystically trapped inside him? If my book is above his head, what about a choice that will fundamentally change his life and alter him physically and biologically forever? Is that above his head too? What do you think? Connect the dots, Sam. You can do it. You'll need to eat worms and to put on gray makeup. The worms give you whiskers. The gray blends you in, the doctor says. And a simple procedure oh cuts feet into fins. The doctor wants to cut into Johnny and make him into a walrus. It's gross eating worms, Mom. They're all so dang twitchy. He doesn't want to eat worms. Our children's... You see what he's doing here? With the analogies that he's drawing, he's arguing that parents are forcing their young children to take medications that they don't want to take or to have surgeries that they don't want to take or to transition when they don't want to transition. That's not what happens. You know, children have a say in the process. Children are allowed to make their own decision. Of course, with the help of medical professionals, of course, of course. But like this whole part that Johnny's like, I don't want to eat worms. That would be the end of it. That's the end of it. Johnny doesn't want to eat worms. No worms for Johnny. No worms. I will say we got exactly the reaction to the uh, doctor page with the bone saw that, that I had in mind when we included that page. And I fought for that page. Now, there was, I, I will tell you a little bit behind the scenes, there was some discussion um, over here uh, uh, about that particular page with the doctor with the bone, sh bone saw chasing the child. And I fought for that. I said, that's got to be in there. And it was. No, uh, Sam, but, but see, ch you say children make their own decisions, but, but children can't make their own decisions. If I'm arguing that a certain course of action is harmful for a child, bad for them, damaging to them, it does no good to retort that the child wants to do it. Children who want to do harmful things should still be prevented from doing those things. Why? Because they're children. They don't understand what they're saying. They don't know what they want. And often they don't actually want what they think they want. At Red Robin the other day, my five-year-old told me he wanted to order salmon for his, for his dinner. Now, I knew damn well that that kid did not want salmon. He wanted chicken tenders and fries because that's what he always wants, and it's the only thing he'll ever actually eat at a restaurant. So I didn't let him have the meal that he wanted because I knew that he didn't really want it because he's a kid. And that's just for something as frivolous as a meal at Red Robin. What if your son says he wants to become a girl? Or a salmon, for that matter. Not only can you be sure that he doesn't really want that because he doesn't understand what he's saying, or what it means, or what the implications are. 
because he can't, because he's just a kid. But also, in this case, whereas it's, it's at least possible to actually order salmon, it's not possible for him to actually become a girl, which is reason enough to not give him what he says he wants. All right, let's skip ahead again and see if Sam saves the best rebuttals for the very end. What's the moral of the story? What's the lesson here? Aren't children's books supposed to have like a lesson that's, you know, clear? Because I don't know what this is trying to say. I don't know what this lesson here is. The other lesson is don't listen to the creepy people in your phone. Don't trust medical professionals. Walruses are mean. Like, oh my goodness. Maybe take a writing class or something. Ask a kid, like, do you know what this book is about? Because none of them did. Like, you could argue that this book is made for adults. Write a book for adults. Write a book for adults. <laughs> or is it that you have to dumb down these analogies and these arguments for children brain because they don't hold any weight in actual adult language? But yeah, that is it for this video. What do you guys think? You're going to go get Johnny the Walrus the book? Hmm? Uh, well, since you asked, what do I think? I think you should probably in the future have some kind of rebuttal if you're going to make a rebuttal video. You rebutted my points in the same way that my dog rebuts the deer that he sees running through the backyard by just barking incoherently at them. Yeah, you're right that I did dumb down the arguments and analogies, but apparently I wasn't able to make them dumb enough for you to understand. My story about a kid pretending to be a walrus was, it would seem, slightly above your reading level. And that's a shame because it's a message that you might have really benefited from. And instead, I'm forced to say, finally, Samantha Lux, that you are, sadly, tragically, canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.